Peace, everybody. How's everybody doing? Um, like I said before, um, I was going to do a Liberian special um, to commemorate July 26th, which is the founding of Liberia. And the topic is, what does Liberian independence mean to you? And, you know, why every African-American should celebrate Liberian independence. So, you know, this was more, spont you know, sort of spontaneous. You know, I'm not going to expect a lot of people to be in the chat, but you can always go and archive this. Um, but today's topic is, is, is continuing on what does Liberian Independence Day mean to you? So Liberian independence means a lot to me. Um, Liberian independence means uh, African-American self-determination. To me, it means, you know, the ideals of Pan-Africanism. It means the idea of Black people being able to build a country, Black people being able to sustain themselves, you know, and Black people really believing that the only way for true freedom was for us to return back to the land of our ancestors and sort of have a place that we can call home. So I'm going to get into the background of Liberian independence. So Liberian independence, uh, of course, Liberia gained its independence on July 26, 1847. So it's 147 years, uh, 174 years to be exact. And, um, you know, we are the oldest republic in Africa. So... I'm going to give you the background on what led to the Liberian independence. So Liberia, officially, they landed in Sherborough Island on, uh, they left New York on the Elizabeth on February 6, 1820, and they landed um, in Sherborough Island, which is in Sierra Leone at this time. The British uh, originally didn't accept them, and so they tried again in 1821, and a, a naval officer with the last name of Stockton um travel further south into what was known as the Pepper Coast and landed in a place we call today Liberia. Now, it was also called uh, Cap du Mont in French, which is Cape Mount, which is where Grand Cape Mount County gets its name from. You have uh, the, the, Mesera, the Meserata River, um, and it's also where we have where Monserrato County is, where Monrovia is. So in 1821, there was John, uh, um, and Stockton was able to, I don't know why I said John, but uh, ca uh, Captain Stockton was able to secure an agreement with King Peter Zolu, or um, King Peter or King Zolu Duma. And he was of the Gola tribe. He was the king of the Gola tribe. He's able to settle this area and that's where the first major settlement would emerge. And that's what we call today Monrovia, named after James Monroe. Originally, it was called Christopolis. So eventually, more African Americans start coming in. You have places like New Georgia, Louisiana, um, Mississippi in Africa that was led by Black people from Greenville, Mississippi. You have Maryland in Liberia, although they don't become part of Liberia until 1857. Um, and then you have Grand Bassa. So the there are five original counties, but at the time of Liberia's independence, there's three. There's Sanoa, Grambasa, and Montserrat. Um, and so in 1839, Liberia becomes a commonwealth. It's officially known as the Commonwealth of Liberia. They have a constitution written in 1839. Um, four or five years later, there's a scuffle between Liberia and Britain, and it's over the, the recognition of Liberia. So Liberia at this time, like I said, it was a commonwealth, but it wasn't a U.S. colony. It, it, Liberia never was a European or a colony. It was more of a private uh, philanthropic endeavor by the what we call the American Colonization Society. So the American Colonization Society uh, was founded in 1816 by a Princeton theologian by the name of Robert Finley. Robert Finley uh, reached in contact with Paul Cuffey, who at the time was the wealthiest black man in America. He was a um, Native American in African descent. He has originally had just sent 38 African Americans to Sierra Leone the year prior in 1815. And he was a huge supporter of the Back to Africa movement, as well as um, with James Fortin. So Robert Finley found the American Colonization Society with the idea of city returning free blacks to Africa. It was officially called the American Colonization Society uh, for Free People of Color. That was the original name. And the people who were a part of that organization were people like James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, Bushra Washington, the nephew of George Washington. You have... 
um, John Marshall, who was a um, judge. You have um, Andrew Jackson. You have James Monroe. Um, Abraham Lincoln was once the president of the American Colonization Society. You have Henry Clay, uh, who was who was considered one of the great compromisers when it came to the issue of slavery. You have Daniel Webster. All of America's major founders were supporters of the American Colonization Society. Now, there are motives onto what the American Colonization Society was for. Some people said it was a pro-slavery group. Uh, some free Blacks were opposed to the American Colonization Society for fear that they might be duped into being sold back into slavery. Um, um, obviously, you have some Northern abolitionists there as well particularly clergymen, um, some like the Quakers who endorsed it or, you know, Presbyterians. And, and that was what the American Colonization Society is. So that's the background on the American Colonization Society. So the American Colonization Society basically doesn't want to maintain Liberia. It basically says that Liberia needs to go its own way. And also many of the African-Americans and uh, African recaptives who were living there at the time wanted some sort of autonomy. So basically britain said liberia has two choices either becomes a colony of the united states or it has to declare its independence or britain was going to take some action um britain had been trying numerous times and even after liberia's independence to sort of try to get liberia under its under its influence as well as france uh, coming in from the ivory coast in guinea um so they call a constitutional convention and the constitutional convention was basically you know coming up with the solution to declare Liberia to be an independent nation. So some people that were part of it were Hillary Teague. He was also one of the signers. You have James Briggs Payne, who became the fourth president of Liberia, who was um, part of um, the negotiations to declare independence from the American Colonization Society. And so all of this comes together and on july 26 the declaration of independence is signed and you have 30 counties so you have 11 delegates and there was one secretary so from Monterado, you have hillary teague you have elijah johnson you have john in lewis not john lewis the obviously the civil rights leader but you have um john now nasalu lewis I think that's how you call uh, pronounce his name. Um, not exactly sure. John John Nosta Lewis. You have um, Samuel Benedict, Beverly R. Wilson, and John B. Gryphon, and they represent Montserrat County. From Grand Bassa, you have four. That will make it now ten. And so you now have John Day, Amos Herring, Anthony W. Anthony W. Gardner, or Anthony William Gardner, and Ephraim Titler. And those are the four representing Grand Bassa. And then you have one, two from Sonoma County, one signer, and one that was a secretary, Richard E. Murray, and then Jacob W. Prout was the secretary. So they all signed Liberia's Declaration of Independence, and Liberia is officially um, an independent nation at this time. And on January 3rd, 1848, Joseph Jenkins Roberts become president after beating... Um, after beating Samuel Benedict, especially considering he was in a controversy with an earlier death of a man by the name of Ty Tobias Overland. Um, so th that situation played a huge part in why Samuel Benedict was not elected. Um, so I do have the Liberian Declaration of Independence, and I will be reading some sections on that because I think it's important that all African-Americans know the Liberian Declaration of Independence. Uh, um, all African Americans should celebrate it because these are all, you know, African Americans. These these are not, you know, random strangers. These are, you know, people who were from our states. So you have, um, you know, people from Virginia. You have, you know, people from Maryland. You have people from Georgia. You have all of these people who were a part of this of this of this movement to create this nation, and so it's only, you know, right that we give them the respect that they that they deserve. And so I think you know, talking about you know, 
them and what they accomplished. It, it, it should matter to us. And, um, you know, I, I think that that is important. So uh, I'm looking for it. Um, I do know I have the Constitution of 1820, the Constitution of 1824. I also have, I mean, uh, yeah, I also have the Constitution of 1839. Um, although I'm particularly trying to focus on the Liberian Declaration of Independence for 1847. So let me check and see, you know, where that is. And um, I'll read some portions of it. And, um, you know, it, it's important that, that we um, understand. Um, so here uh, is the Declaration of Independence. This is a brief um, one. I'm going to share my screen um, so that people can see a little bit of it. Um, I have a, I'm looking, I think I have a better one. It's just, right now um i just don't it's not hitting um okay okay i have it so here it is a better one and a more clear one um here it is um so here is what it reads. I also have a second one, although this second one you see is not really clear. It's sort of the same. So what the Constitutional Convention of 1847 says, we, the Republic of Liberia, were originally inhabitants of the United States of North America. Um, in some parts of the country, we were debarred by law from all the rights and privileges of men in other parts, public sentiments more powerful than law frowned us down. We were everywhere shut out from all civil life civil office. We were excluded from all participation in the government. We were taxed without our consent. We were compelled to contribute to the resources of a country which gave us no protection. We were made a separate and distinct class and against uh, and against us, every avenue to improvement was effectively closed. Strangers from all lands of a color different from ours were preferred before us. Uh, we uttered our complaints, but they were unattended to or only met by alleging the particular peculiar institution of the country, all hopes of a favorable change in our country um, was, was thus wholly extinguished in our bosoms. And we looked to, and we looked with anxiety abroad for some asylum from the deep degradation. So you see right there um, that, that, um, they, they, they're speaking on the violence that was perpetuated against them. They're speaking on the fact that, you know, they've tried everything they could, you know, for America to care about them. And America's just not caring about them. They're not, you know, listening to them. They're not, you know, speaking, uh, answering their calls. They're not doing any of that. And so... Now you have a situation where they feel it is necessary for them to go abroad, you know, to, you know, declare independence um, and, you know, be a, a, a sovereign nation. And, and this was really the first major step to getting, you know, um, Liberian independence. And let's continue on. The western coast of Africa was... was the place selected by American benevolence and philanthropy for our future home. Um, removed, removed beyond those influences which depressed us in our native land, it was hoped we would be enabled to enjoy those rights and privileges and exercises and improvement, those faculties which the God of nature has given us in common with the rest of mankind. Under the auspices of the American Colonization Society, we established ourselves here and on land acquired by purchasers from the lords of the soil. In our original compact with this society, we, for important reasons, delegated it to certain political powers, while this institution stipulated that whenever the people should become capable of conducting the government or whenever the people should desire it, this institution would resign the delegated power peacefully, withdraw its supervision, and leave the people to govern of themselves. 
under the auspices and guidance of this institution, which has notably in imperfect faith redeemed its pledges to the people we have grown and prospered. From time to time, our numbers has increased by migration from America and by ascension from native tribes. And from time to time, as circumstances required it, we have extended our borders by acquisition of land by honorable purchases from the natives of the country. And as our territory has extended and our population increased, our commerce has also increased. The flags, most of the civilized nations of the earth, flow in our harbors and their merchants are open in opening an honorable and profitable trade. Until recently, these visits have been of a uniformly harmonious character, but as they've become more frequent into more numerous points of our extending coast, questions have arisen, which it is supposed can be adjusted only by the agreement between sovereign powers. So at this time, Liberia is not a, you know, a nation, it's still a commonwealth, and the American Colonization Society, you know, still is you know, sort of, you know, having his hand over it. And so that was one of the reasons that led to his independence. For past years, the American Colonization Society has virtually withdrawn all direct and active part in the administration of the government, except in the appointment of the governor, which is also, who is also a colonist for the apparent purpose of testing the ability of the people to conduct the affairs of government, and no complaint of crude legislation, nor of mismanagement, nor of maladministration has yet been heard. In the view of these facts, this institution, the American Colonization Society, with that with that good faith, which has uniformly marked all of its dealings with us by a set of resolutions in January in the year of our Lord, 1,846, dissolve all political connections with the people of this republic, return the power with which it was delegated and left to the people, to the government of themselves. The people of the Republic of Liberia then are of right and in fact a free, sovereign, and independent state possessed of all rights, powers, and functions of government. And assuming the momentous responsibility of the position they have taken, the people of this republic felt justified by the necessities of the case. And with this conviction, they threw themselves with confidence upon the candid consideration of the civilized world. Liberia is not the offspring of grasping and visions, nor the tool of avaricious speculation. No desire for territory to aggrandizement brought us to these shores, nor do we believe so sort of a motive entered into the high consideration of those who aided us in providing this asylum. Liberia is an asylum for the most grinding oppression. In the coming to the shores of Africa, we indulge the pleasing hopes that we would be permitted to exercise and improve those faculties, which impart to man his dignity, to nourish in our hearts the flames of honorable ambition, to cherish and indulge those aspirations with a, bene with a beneficent creator had implanted in every human heart, and to evince all those who despise, ridicule, and oppress our race that we possess with them a common nature are with them susceptible of equal refinement and capable of equal advancement, all that adorns and dignifies man. This is just a brief introduction to the Liberian independence. As you see, it is it has a long, it's long, but just getting the beginning part is so important because it's so fulfilling to hear what our ancestors were writing and what they were describing. And they give a completely different story to, you know, the mainstream narrative that have denigrated Liberia, you know, destroyed Liberia's reputation, that have, you know, given Liberia a bad lane, name. And we want to correct that narrative. We want to celebrate the good of Liberia. We want to celebrate the, the history and the scale of what Liberia meant. And that's what Liberian independence means to me. It means our people were able, just a small number, create a dream, create a vision, create a blueprint that allowed for us to succeed to this day. We have the cities, we have the infrastructure. Now we have to come in and invest. It is a dream and a representation of all the aspiration of all of our great leaders. Marcus Garvey, Henry McNeil Turner, Alexander Carmel, Henry Highland Garnett, Martha Ann Riggs, J Joseph Jenkins Roberts, Jane Wayne Roberts, Alfred Francis Russell, Maya Angelou, Nina Simone, you name it, that's what Liberian independence means to us. It means people coming to our universities, Cunnington University, University of Liberia, William B.S. Tubman, and studying at our universities. It means founding the OAU, which became 
a member of the app, which became known as the African Union. It means us being founded as being part of the Monrovia group, getting countries such as Nigeria to support us. It means us being a vocal support for those against apartheid and giving them refuge and teaching for them at our universities. That is what it means. I would just like to finish this last page and then I will continue on to talking about something that happened in the 1960s that will explain and go even further in depth about Liberia being the home for Black Americans. We were animated with the hope that here we should be at liberty to train up our children in the way they should go, to inspire them with the love and an honorable fame, to kindle within them the flame of a lofty philanthropy, and to form a strong within them the principles of humanity, virtue, and religion. Among the strongest motives to leave our native land, to abandon forever the scenes of our childhood, and to sever the most endeared connections was the desire for a retreat where, free from the agitations of fear and molestation, we could in composure and security approach and worship the God of our fathers. Thus far, our highest hopes have been realized. Liberia is already a, the happy home of thousands who were, once doomed, who were once the doomed victims of oppression, and if left unmolested to go on with her natural and spontaneous growth, if her movements be left free from paralyzing intrigues of jealousy, ambitious, and unscrupulous avarice, she will throw open a wider and yet wider door for thousands who are now looking with an ancient eye for some land of rest. That final paragraphs represent what we've heard for years and years and years that if we are kept to our own devices uh the own devices we can strive we can succeed we can become who we want to be how many people talk about well when are black people going to be left alone and that was when liberia was founded as expressed in the constitutional convention of 1847 they are speaking to us they were sending us a message they were giving us foresight Finally, I just want to, before we continue on, before we wind stuff down, because I don't want to keep you here, um, I want to talk about something that I read from Reek Speak. Reek Speak does great work. Keep listening to Reek Speak. You will not be disappointed with them. Um, it was Liberia in the 1960s, and it was Reek Speak, and I will show that to you guys. Um, it's important because, you know, let let people talk about Liberia in the 1980s in the Civil War as an indictment, as if we are a failure, as if we are incapable of self-government, as if we are oppressors, as if we did not have revolutionary vision, revolutionary aspirations, revolutionary, you know, tendencies. Liberia in the 1960s debunked all of that. And it's reekspeak.com, uh, reekspeaks.wordpress.com. And the writer... Is a man is Reek speaks. It has nine comments. It was written March 3rd, 2016. And I want to share it with you guys Liberia in the 1960s so that we can understand what Liberia was before the coup. Let's talk about it. Never undermine your greatness. Never undermine your greatness. Never undermine your greatness. I just wanted to say that one final time. Let's continue on to Reek Speaks. Liberia in the 1960s. And it talks about, you know, his dad's life being in Arkansas. So I'm going to, you know, scroll all the way down to when he started moving to Liberia. So here it was. He says, I'm still not 100% sure of everything that led my led dad to Liberia in 1959. I do know that he was very active in the civil rights actions here in the Bay Area. This led him to being a person watched by the police. He told me of one final climactic fight with cops where an officer handcuffed him and tried to push him to the ground. Dad swung his handcuffed hands and the cut the officer behind the ear. The cop bled so much dad was afraid he cut a major artery. 
after that, he'd have trouble with the police every time he went to the 49ers game at the old Kaiser Stadium. I think the race-based troubles of the times, that activism and a sense of of adventure all conspired to bring him to Africa. Some Bay Area natives who can still remember the 50s sometimes get caught up in his relative integration, but there were still subtle forms of Jim Crow in existence at the time. Thank you. Jim Crow was everywhere in the form of ghettos, in the form of redlining. We've seen that all. It wasn't just officially blacks, wh- blacks only, whites only in the South, Mississippi, Alabama, uh, South Carolina. It was in you know, Chicago, it was in Baltimore, it was in Detroit, it was in New York, it was in San Francisco, it was in Los Angeles, in Watts, we've seen it in all forms. Which would come to full light a few years later when Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale formed the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. Liberia was suggested by a West African transfer student. So this was a West African transfer student, not a Liberian themselves, but a West African transfer student who had been studying probably in Liberia at the time. Africa as a whole was a great topic of interest amongst black people in the 1950s and an interest that would explode during the black consciousness era of the 1960s. More and more African nations that gained their independence throughout the decade and the old African-American dreams of a dignified life in Africa were rekindled. Liberia was one of the original targets of those dreams during the 19th century. The African business student thought that Liberia would be a better country for my father and Juanita to settle in. The basis of it was Liberia's history as a country founded by American blacks. The official language was English. The constitution and flag were modeled on that of the United States. It was even deeper than that. Unlike the stories people generally hear about Africans, Liberians generally had a positive attitude about American blacks. This was done, this was due to their history, but also to the steady stream of American blacks going to Liberia over the years as soldiers, missionaries, teachers, and technical workers. So... One nation always had a positive view about us, and that was Liberia. No other nation had that much of a positive attitude towards us. But Liberia. Liberia was the only place that gave us a chance to live our African lives gave us a chance to live in peace and connect with our African roots, knowing that you have the Pele's, the Bas, the Lomas, the Geos, now, also known as the Dons, you have the Day, you have the Bondi, you have the Mandingos, you have all these tri- indigenous people that have languages, that have religions, gods, and goddesses that we can connect that our ancestors had lost. Liberia has several periods where it's seen a true massive influx of blacks would flow from the diaspora. Liberian officials were expecting this before the Civil War held up the prospects of freedom. Then the then during Marcus Garvey's UNIA movement, Liberia was the target of his repatriation schemes until the Liberian government realized Liberia's resettlement might mean a takeover and loss of power for them. Liberia saw a great influx of American investment and, uh, during and after World War II. Its status as a black country in Africa with ties to America made it a common landing spot for American black teachers, trainers, missionaries, and others. At one time during the 1970s, even the black Hebrew Israelites were given refuge to Liberia before eventually settling in Israel. So we see right here what Liberia meant to so many black Americans. And as we celebrate this Independence Day, think about all of them. Think about the five-star hotel you created. Think about all that we have done. This is what you, this is what we should celebrate this July 26th. What we accomplished, what we achieved. Liberia has achieved so much. And we should be proud of it. Don't let nobody tell you you can't celebrate this July. And to my Pele, Loma, Gio, Don, Mandingo, Mende, Crew, Kron, Gribo, you are our brothers and sisters. Y'all are the ones that we get back to. Y'all are the ones who have inspired so much ingenuity. We we have not forgotten. 
your Loma syllabary, your ke your Pele syllabary, your Va syllabary, your Grebo language, your Kron language, your Kru language. We ain't forgot about it. And it, the fact that it has its own script, its own syllabi, shows the ingenuity and greatness of Liberians themselves. I know there are a lot of Liberian celebrations going on. I'm sad that I can't get to, you know, one of them because I would love to just talk with my Liberian brothers and sisters. You know, um, there was one going on in the state across me, but I couldn't get there. But, you know, even in my home, I'm, I'm still celebrating this. Happy 26th from Woe Baby and Zawadi EM said hello family and hello to you too. Make sure you subscribe to Zawadi's channel. She gives you so many gems as usual. You want any information about doing business in Liberia, she is the one to go to. So make sure you subscribe to Zawadi EM's channel and you will not regret it. You know... Also, let's remember their names. Let's remember Hillary T. Let's remember Benjamin. Uh, let's remember Samuel Benedict. Let's remember um, John N. Lewis, John Nelson Lou Lewis. Remember John uh, B. Gripon. Remember Beverly R. Um, Wilson. Remember all of their names. Peace, Chima. And of course, like Woe Baby said, the love of liberty brought us here. And today, the love of liberty unites us. Oh, I love that phrase. I love that phrase. I'm going to keep that on right there. The love of liberty brought us here. And today, the love of liberty unites us. 16 tribes, one people coming from all across the black world, St. Kitts and Nevis, Trinidad, Barbados, you name it, we did it. So I'm about to wrap everything up. Like, I, I don't want to keep y'all here forever. Um, I know some of y'all may be at work and, and, you know, but I just really wanted to come on here and, and, and share the greatness of Liberia why every African-American should celebrate it. This is your country. Your ancestors founded it. Your ancestors played a vital role in the uh, stabilizing Liberia, making sure it survived the scramble for Africa. It inspired Black Americans. You should be proud of it. Every African-American should be founded. These founders represented from your states. You got somebody to rep if you from Maryland. You got somebody to rep if you from Georgia. You got somebody to represent if you from Kentucky. You got somebody to represent if you're from South Carolina. You got somebody to rep if you're from Virginia. You got somebody to represent if you're from Ohio. You got every single group, the Barbados. You got everybody that can rep you. Everything about Liberian history is a mirror of Africa, Afro-Caribbeans, and African-Americans themselves. From colloquia to Creole, you name it, it is reflected. And to understand the potential that we have, I, I, want, I want to talk about the, this. Everybody knows where it is, but... We cannot forget about this, of our accomplishments. This right here is something we also need to understand of where we can be. This is where we were before, and now let's try to see if we can get this again. I want to show this to you guys. The Ducor Hotel. Everybody has heard of the Ducor Hotel, but this just shows a little bit of the greatness that we can have as a people if we put our minds to it. We can have this. We want that. We want to see this. This is what we want to build. This is what we want to see. We want to see that. 
the first five star hotel ever in Africa, in Liberia. This was the place to be. Right here, it says it all. So it's that the world, this is what we had and we can do it again. We will do it again. Like Zawadi said, that was considered the five-star hotel in, of Africa. And everybody went. And we can have that. We can have this. We can have this. We can have this bag. We don't have to think of it as, uh, as a pass. We can have this. We can have this. I, I need to show this more to people. We can have this. We can have this, ladies and gentlemen. We can have this back. We can have this. We can have this. We can have all of this. We can have this. All of this. And it was just led by a few people that paved the way. Just a few people created all of this. Created all of this. And we can have this. Don't think we can't have this. We will have this. You know, even and to put and to put into perspective, there, there's, there's, there, there's this article from a man in Nigeria. This is the man from Nigeria. I want y'all to listen to what he said about Liberia himself. He is. From Abuja. Um, let me let me get it to y'all. He's from Abuja. Whoops. Pardon me. Let me continue dropping gems real quick. Hey, this is who writ this. Republic of Liberia at 174 years old. And like I tell people, look at what he says. He says he's a financial inclusion consultant based in Abuja. He says the following. He says, Let's hear it for Africa's oldest republic. Happy anniversary. Happy independence anniversary. Greetings to our brothers and sisters in the free land. Okay. He says there can be no reason why Liberia cannot reset its coordinates as one of the most stable and fastest growing economies in sub-Saharan Africa, promoting diversification of the economic base with emphasis in tourism and international trade with Nigeria. This is what he was saying with us. First African Republic. Okay. He says this, Liberia's first republic ended in 1980 with the assassination of then, William Pre of then President William Tubman in a military coup led by then Master Sergeant Samuel Samuel Doe. Compare the whopping 133 years of political stabilities with that of a country like Nigeria that has birthed as many as four republics just within a four-year period. He said, Liberia wielded considerable influence in African affairs in the late 1950s and 60s. 
President Tubman led the conservative Monrovia group comprising Liberia, Nigeria, and most Francophone nations. The Monrovia bloc promoted the principles of nationalism versus pan-Africanism vision of the opposing radical Casablanca group. The conflict eventually eventual compromise between both groups led to the formation of the Organization of African Union, precursor of the African Union in 1963, with the ideas of the Tolbert-led Monrovia group and Tubman-led Monrovia group prevailing against the supranational ideas of the Casablanca group, comprising of prominent statesmen like Ghana's Kwame Nkrumah, Guinea's Sekou Touré, and Egypt's Gamal Abdul Nasser. And he says this, no other African leader appointed or elected in the modern history has garnered the kinds of rewards and recognition harvested by Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Liberia's 24th president. He says, Liberia has been a trailblazer in several aspects. The country has produced as many as two female heads of states and government, Ruth Perry and Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. It was considered to be where women can rule compared to other African countries where women's places is said to be in the other room where women are supposed to be heard and not seen. Come on now, y'all. Rep your country and don't be ashamed. Say you proud of Liberia. Remember that song? I, I might need to put that song, I'm proud to be Liberian, and I don't care what people got to say. I might need to play that for a song. I mean, I might need to play that for a second. Hold on. Look. I might need to play that for a second real quick. Let, 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 let me play that real quick. So, fam, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And, of course... You know, I got to play this for you guys. And that was Liberia's national anthem. And, you know, we, of course, can't forget this. Liberia! <laughs> it's your day! It's time to party! This is for you, fight! You want it for you! I am proud to be a Liberian. And I don't care what anybody will say. I will jump and sing and shout to rain. Cause today is our independence day. Liberia, oh, our day. Liberia, we are free. Liberia, no one wants to be free. Liberia, our day. Liberia, we are free. Cause today is our day. Liberia, now my country, now my motherland. Liberia. Make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you sign up to the website at bailafricstand.org slash register. 
Um, we will continue with the Liberian presidential series. We will continue to bring you news about Liberia and what's going on throughout the continent and how it pertains to us building a Galanian political power. So with that, fam, thank you so much for tuning into this Liberian Independence Day special. Make sure you have a great Liberian Independence Day. Make sure you go out to events. Make sure you congregate with your fellow Liberians. If you're African-American, take this time to reflect on what they've accomplished. Make sure that you know you teach Liberian history. Make sure it's known throughout the world. And remember, I'm your host, Shabari Lamb. And like the man said, the love of liberty brought us here. And today, the love of liberty unites us. 16 tribes, one people, in union strong, Success is sure, and we cannot fail. Peace, fam.